Uh, I'm Jason McCarthy. I am uh, under Devin. We have a we have a group of three, but we're all doing independent products projects. So um, I'm one of three for that group. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Devin for advising me all year, and for UW Stout for hosting the RU. Uh, it was a great experience. I had, I had a lot of fun working. But uh, to get to it, my title of my research is Path Oriented Power Wheelchair Navigation Assistance. Um, it's kind of a lot for a title, but it, it really describes the whole project in, in a few words. Um, in some more words, what I basically did was put a camera on a wheelchair, and using that, it can help a power wheelchair navigate down any, any sort of path, like a sidewalk or any sort of consistent terrain. Uh, and through my project, I'm going to, on my presentation, I'm going to go over some, some motivations, uh, kind of the objective I tried to achieve, as well as some methods I used to discern the sidewalk from other terrain, and then finally some results from my experimenting. And if you ever can't see this corner down here, just, just let me know. All right, so first of all, I need a reason to do this research. Uh, I thought it was important to increase independence for users and for some people with cognitive or fine motor skill disabilities, they aren't able to navigate away from home without a caregiver or someone to help them, um, even drive a wheelchair by himself. And that makes it difficult to uh, achieve everyday tax, tasks like maybe going to the store to grab something or to uh, visit friends or family. And it, I feel like that takes away some serious independence from users. I feel like you can have a greater quality of life if you're able to do more things on your own. So I thought that was the most important uh, aspect going into this. And I want this to be like an inexpensive add-on. Uh, maybe it could be coupled with the system from the beginning, but for the vast majority of wheelchairs that already exist, I feel like it would be important to make it easy to integrate into the rest of the system. Uh, and talking to some other, uh, some professionals and some wheelchair users themselves, they did not see anything like this. Uh, even some, some research papers I read. Uh, there's not really any consumer versions. There's, there's lots of versions uh, being studied, lots of research. MIT is working on some, um, some other schools, but it's not really seen in every, every day. Um, no wheelchairs really have it. Uh, and, and part of that reason is because they have lots of sensors. Uh, we'll go over in the next slide. There's, there's lots of um, different components, and some of these have uh, computers tied to them, so they're not very, uh, they're not very usable. Um, yep, and here are some of the technologies. So, the the most recent example I found is this one. It's uh, got to connect somewhere to that over there, attached to the top, and it's got some other sensors on it. It's got laser down here as well as some proximity sensors. Uh, this doesn't seem very applicable to me because it's, it takes up a lot of space and some of these sensors don't work um, in all conditions. Uh, for example, the Kinect doesn't work outside so it would be mainly kind of a home device and also some of the other sensors don't have a lot of range so you'd need more sensors to make up for that. And it just increases the complexity of the, of the whole project and uh, it's not very useful. So some, some sensors that are used in current technology, like I said, would be like an infrared sensor like the Kinect, or uh, some, some distance sensors, and also GPS, and some even have a physical bump sensor, um, kind of similar to uh, your guys' group. You'll see that later on. Uh, it'll, it'll just have a, a physical bend in the front, and it'll just detect if it hits something. Um, these systems aren't. I don't see it's very robust, and uh, the one of the survey articles I read agrees with me. <coughs> you kind of need all of them to be working together to achieve something that's actually functional. Okay, now what I tried to accomplish was, like I said before, to have the camera identify a sidewalk and navigate accordingly. So I. Uh, this is just a map of the area. I, in the end, in my results section, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of this path, but I thought that 
these areas showed a, a decent variety of terrain. Uh, in this area, this, this is Frickland Hall up top, this is the student center. Um, in this area, there was kind of a red circle where all the, um, where all the pads meet, and it's kind of a, a, an offset in color. It's, it's a different colored brick. Um, down here in front of the SVRI, there's, there's a couple obstacles. There's some poles and um, some, some crosswalk identification. And it would need to take in all that information and know that it's still sidewalk and it's still navigable. And I'd like to test during a uh, daytime outdoor sidewalk environment. So it's not, it's not robust in that it won't work at night because the camera needs to see. And I, I, wanna, I want it to uh, be tethered towards kind of a, a, an urban or suburban environment where there are sidewalks, there are designated places to move. And uh, like I said, I want it to transition automatically between environments. So whether you're, whether you're walking on a, a sidewalk in the middle of a field or uh, uh, driving on a sidewalk in the middle of a field or on a sidewalk next to a street or on a crosswalk, I want it to automatically recognize that and continue to move. Okay, so you guys, you guys have probably all seen this slide a lot already. But some, some thought to how I want the process to work. You can see easily that the sidewalk's not actually right, it's gray, but the, the sidewalk would contrast from the grass behind it and, and the rest of the image. Um, it's pretty, it's a, it's a consistent gray, so that would be easy to pick out from the rest of the picture. Uh, by analyzing that and doing some sort of uh, transformations on it, you can single that out from the rest of the picture and you can analyze the shape to determine if the user is on the path you'd want it to be or not. And I think it's, um, in addition to this, I think it's important that the wheelchair doesn't control where the user goes, but just limits the user from driving off path. So that gives them the freedom to choose the route they want to take, and it'll just hinder them if they um, are leaning towards the edge. So here's just a flow chart of, of what I'd like to accomplish, uh, or what in the, in the beginning what I'd like to accomplish with that wheelchair in particular. The joystick on the wheelchair has a Bluetooth output that can send to computers to control a cursor on the screen or something similar. So I was going to take a uh, Raspberry Pi and hijack that and use that as the input. And then the camera would consider the image and determine if it was on path or not. And then if it was, the Raspberry Pi would send the signal right through to the uh, drive control and just drive straight. But for example, if they were driving off path, it wouldn't shut the wheelchair down or anything. It would just, um, it would just limit the speed so they could maybe recognize if they were driving off. But some things didn't work out, so I like to uh, I focused on this part, and instead of having the wheelchair modify the steering, I just added output to an LED array to determine if they're actually on path or not. Here's some hardware I used. Uh, like I said, I wanted to keep it in, um, not very expensive, so $100 was my price point, and I did achieve that. Um, I did it with a Raspberry Pi and the camera. I'll go over the components later too. Um, a little battery that you can use to charge your phone. Um, an SD card and just some s simple electronics components. components. Uh, I used an uh, open source um, software package. I used the Raspbian Jesse, which is a, a Linux version that runs on the Raspberry Pi, and I use Python for my programming, and I use a big chunk of the OpenCV library, which is for computer vision. Here is the design of the LED array. Um, I just put it on a breadboard just because um, in the end this wouldn't actually be used on the wheelchair. This is just to demonstrate the perfect concept. So as you can see, it's the same as the breadboard. 
Um, it's just got jumper cables on the bottom and attached to the right there. You can see that using the GPIO pens. And the purpose of this is when the user uh, starts to travel off path, the LEDs on the side will blink more. So if the user is going straight, the middle one will light up. But if they start to turn, then these ones will start to light up. And then finally, if they're, if they're really off course, the red ones will light up. And there's a logging procedure in the code that um, highlights when the red ones light up and the time that it happens. So if anyone looking at the logs um, can look at any sort of cues that may have um, done that. So here's the rest of the system. Uh, I'll pass it in moments too. Uh, you can see the Raspberry Pi on top, and this is the little camera module inside. It all fits in a nice little case. And on the back, there's an attachment for uh, kind of similar to a picture frame where you can uh, put a nail in, but instead I 3D printed something that'll fit on the rail. And this would be unique to the wheelchair. Um, they, there would have to be a different implementation for, for each thing. I, of course, tailored it to that, and I used the rail that the, the arm was on. And that is just attached by USB to the battery. Um, if you want, you can see that the, the 3D printer part just comes right off. Um, but it's all, it's all very contained. It's all, it's all a small piece. Um, it fits real nicely. Uh, it just wedges right in there, and it's Velcroed to the arm and to the bottom. Um, it's pretty stable. I, I, I drove around a lot and I didn't really have any problems with, with it falling off at all. And the, you can see on the 3D printed part that, that it's, kind of a, it's kind of a goofy angle because it needs to be pointed down and to the side because it's offset from the center. And there's a function in the code that allows for recalibration that considers um, the camera being offset. All right, now just looking at um, some of the software. I didn't put any raw code in here because I didn't think it would um, really be that important. But I, I considered a point right in the middle of the screen because whatever's right in front of the wheelchair would um, hopefully be sidewalk in the beginning. And it'll take the average color value and then consider the rest of the screen and only keep the things that are in range. So the little box up top is just kind of what I played with to find the range. And I did this with um, around 30 different pictures of sidewalks, so I could kind of get a feel for how the different properties of colors would affect different terrains. And I did find that there, although there wasn't really a correlation to any of the appearance properties, the range values all were pretty similar. So I could set uh, a range and it would be applicable to uh, all kinds of different terrains. So I was, I was happy that that worked out. And here are some results. Here we are starting on the south end of Frickland Hall and traveling south. And now the SVRI is on the left, if you're kind of picturing the map. So you can see that um, it'll recognize the sidewalk. It has troubles with shadows once in a while, but that'll be... That'll be a problem fixed in future releases. But it'll, it'll recognize the sidewalk and then find the center of the shape. That's what this pink dot is. And then according to where the pink shape is horizontally on the sidewalk, it'll light up the uh, corresponding LED. So um, it'll be more evident in the next one. This was just showing a, uh, just how it sees things. It'll even have a little bit of object detection. You'll see when. See the people are walking by, it, it tracks them because they're obviously not gray like the sidewalk, so it'll pick those out as objects and uh, move the centroid over a little bit. So that was just, that was just around the block with uh, Frickland and the SVRI. And here is here's a test for me driving the Um, this is going up the hill on the east side of the block. Uh, I would drive straight 
and then drive towards the sidewalk. And this is to demonstrate um, how far the how far the centroid moves. So that would be the center, and then as it moves, it moves further out to the side. The closer you get to the other side of the sidewalk. In the next video, I'll have um, the LED array. Sorry for the, the portrait video. I should have hired somebody to video this for me. Mm -hmm. um, the LEDs aren't very bright in daytime, but um, again, that's not super important because you wouldn't really be using the LEDs for the actual application. So you can see right now, it's super dim, but the, the middle green one is lit. And I was just fixing the speed right here. As I move over, you can see, I'll point out the LEDs, the, the second green one, then the yellow, then the next one, and then it goes back. You can kind of see the, the grass popping in the corner when I get close to it. It's probably a good demonstration. Uh, see, yellow, and then yellow, and then as I move back, it will just back to the middle. It's definitely more apparent during the daytime when you're actually driving it, uh, rather than in this video. to exit the presentation and restart yeah, the sludge. Okay, and just some statistics from that video. It recorded uh, about six frames per second. It was a little bit over. It probably would have been less uh, if it wasn't gathering the frames and, and recording them each time. And traveling at the medium speed that translated to 4.4 frames per meter, which I think is a pretty good rate for traveling down the sidewalk. Uh, the little battery that I have is 7.8 amp hours, and the Raspberry Pi uh, takes about um, between 1.2 and 2 amps, depending on the peripherals attached. So that'll equate to about four hours. And you can see in the video, it was it was still kind of um, still not super consistent, but it did handle the changing terrain. Uh, subsequent versions would need uh, shadow detection and uh, a little bit more uh, robustness in the terrain. And for uh, some further work, you could uh, add some object avoidance. So that would be something more than just some people walking by, but maybe if, uh, if a ball bounced in the way or if, um, some, some curb detection, um, anything relevant to that. Uh, as well as you could integrate this with the other system that I showed and GPS alerts and caregiver intervention and control. Uh, those would need uh, 
some more technologies added, which would increase the complexity. And overall, this would just need to be easier for consumers to access. So this would need to go probably through a wheelchair company rather than uh, just an add-on so that they can actually integrate it into their systems. So, any questions? You mentioned there's research done in that field, mm -hmm. but there's not much yet on a consumer uh, uh, level. Yeah. What do you think is the reason? Um, I've, I've talked to some people and they think um, a lot of these systems are covered by insurance. So I think if they were inexpensive enough to pay out of pocket to buy them, I think they would be uh, adopted more in uh, the real world. Because they, they mainly just exist in, in research right now. Yeah, my, my original my original vision for this would be um, uh, using the some other systems attached to the Raspberry Pi. There's some some modules that you can add to it that allow um, kind of a to use it as a mobile interface. So you could um, with a lot of with a lot more work, you could maybe even put in a phone app that would connect to the camera and integrate with the steering system, so that you could have full control of the wheelchair. Now with the you know advent of self-driving cars, could there be some collaboration between those systems? Yeah, definitely. One of the one of the main um, articles I based off of, based this off, off of was a uh, lane departure warning research, and uh, what that did was it kind of used the same thing it used a, a normal camera, and it would find the the road markings. So mainly for uh, highway driving, because there's there's very consistent markings, there's, there's dotted lines on the side. So there wasn't really a lot of surprise going on on the highway. So that's where the technology was really applicable. And I thought I could use kind of a similar, similar idea. They use, they use a different algorithm. They use more edge detection. Um, and I use more of a, a color-based algorithm. Okay. Thank you.